Today we just got in the New Wave Toys Capcom 1943 The Battle of Midway Replicade Mini Arcade Machine. Previously we did take a look at the uh, 1942 one. That was the Romstar Capcom Lowboy version. And this is the Dynamo Overhaul version. So we're going to take a quick look at this. This does have 1943 as the you know marquee game, but it also has 1942 built into it as well. It came in a shipper box and it was also inside this box and then it's also inside its actual box. So let's take a look at that, get this out of the way, test it out. I think uh, New Wave Toys, they've been doing a really good job with these things, uh, increasingly getting better with the builds and whatnot over the years with all the different versions they've put out. I've been pretty impressed with the past few that they've done. Uh, the 1942 one was really awesome. I like the look of this one, how it kind of has that uh, coin door lock thing going across the uh, the bottom there. But there we go, the overhaul edition. Looks, plays, and controls like the original 1943 arcade machine. Got a bunch more uh, information on the back there. I'm not going to read all that stuff, but it comes with a mini arcade stick as well. Uh, repli replica of the 1943 owner's manual and some tokens and stuff, so... Yeah, why not? Includes two games. Let's get this thing open. And you can also plug this thing into the TV. I don't know if I already mentioned that, but yeah, the past uh, few that they've released, you could plug them into the TV as well, which is is cool, I guess. But um, I mean, these are really like collector type things. I mean, these aren't really in the same vein as like a lot of these other mini arcade machines that are out there, like the Astro City Mini and stuff like that where you're gonna use those as a console occasionally. This, I mean, it's just kind of a, like an added benefit, I guess, because it's only a couple games, it's a replica of the actual machine. So yeah, the packaging has gotten way better over the years as well. Look at that, the way they've, they've been doing everything. Okay, so we got the, uh, the replica instruction manual, owner's manual. I don't know if I could focus, they're so tiny, Barbie-sized coins. The owner's manual, instruction manual, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's supposed to be kind of like a, you know, replica, how to play. I mean, it's just, you know, different languages, owner's manual type thing. And we have a charging cable. To charge this thing up. Let's go ahead and get this machine out. This is the, yes, the arcade stick, the little mini arcade stick is in the back, stored away. Okay, so here it is. Let's get this thing out of the box or out of the bag. Oh, they do have a protective sticker over the marquee that lights up. Let's go ahead and peel that off. I love the way this one looks. Man, I like this one better than the uh, the previous version, the uh, Low Boy or whatever it was, the Romstar. I really like this style better. On the back, danger, high voltage inside. All the little details, I mean, yeah, obviously a real cabinet didn't have this, you know, in here, but boom, there you go. Little stick. These actually feel okay. I mean, they're not the, the greatest thing in the world, but they feel decent and they, they work fine. So we have the uh, port micro USB. That's probably what the actual cable was, either to charge it or to use that, because there's no extra cable in here, it looks like. Oh, wait. There is an extra cable. I'm tripping. It was right there. So you do get a charge cable and the cable for the controller. Oh, I'm like, what is jingling around? Did I get a defective one? Like I was like, this is gonna suck. I'm reviewing it and there's something jingling in there. No, it's the little lock on the uh, the coin door latch. I'm like, that is cool, dude. I, I thought it was just like molded on there. It was just like stuck, but no, it's like kind of flopping around. That's cool. Okay. we got. Got that back part closed. Let's go ahead and peel that off. Go ahead and get this thing powered on. Is that the power up there? Power and volume up top. Don't know if this has a charge. It looks like it does. Like how that all looks. The marquee lit up. I mean, it's not dark in here, so it's not going to be extremely bright. The control panel. This thing is slick, man. Where's that HDMI output? Pretty damn sure. Oh, yeah. Change TV setting to fit C manual for more. So the HDMI is actually under the sticker. I was like, 
I'm pretty sure that's how the last one was too. But I was tripping for a second. Like, where's that HDMI? It's right there, just covered by that sticker telling you to change the display setting. And you got the little lights in there. So that's, that's cool, man. A little attention to detail here. Very responsive little stick here. Excellent game. Okay, how do we get into... Okay, second player button. The second player coin slot down there. That brings up our little option screen here. Try to get a good view on that. Difficulty, marquee light on and off. P12 switch on or off. That's to swap around the player one, player two, obviously. I think we had some confusion on that the last time we looked at it. Uh, scan lines, let's go ahead and turn that on. Backlight, we could increase the backlight. Attract mode audio, turn that on or off. Like when we first booted it up and I was talking, there was no audio. That's normally in dip switch settings, so we could turn that on. So if it's on uh, the attract mode, just sitting there, you didn't start playing a game, it'll play the game's audio. We can go to game select to select between 1942 and 1943. So, okay. Now we got the scan lines on. Oh shit, I just pressed player two. I just added a player two, but we don't have the uh, controller plugged in. Let's get that plugged in. Use this, see if it controls player two. And yes, it does. Player, I could play, uh, try to play both at once. Okay, so we got it plugged in through HDMI to my monitor here. Now, if you want to use this as player one, we do have to get into the, uh, as you see now it's playing the uh, attract mode audio because I turned that on. But if we want to use this as player one, we have to do the P1, P2 switch. So turn that on. Uh, we could just hit the, the, back, the back button there. And then we could, there we go. Insert coin to the back button, press start. And it should work. This one should work. If you don't put it the P1, P2 on, this would just be P2, player two. Pretty cool, let's go ahead and switch to, hit the back button, the right one. This one's coin, this one's menu, and change it to 1942. Okay, so 1942 here. I did turn the uh, scan lines off, and I noticed the uh, visuals are a little soft. I did kind of focus back in on my monitor here. It wasn't focused earlier. But it doesn't look horrible, but I, I'm not typically a big fan of scan lines, but I actually, I think this looks better with scan lines on, so let's put those back on. It just it, it just looks sharper with the scan lines, just looks nicer when you're playing it this way. When you play it on the actual uh, little system here, it looks fine either way, but yeah, on a monitor, I think scan lines just, it looks a lot better. But there you go. Just wanted to make this uh, real quick video. I really do dig the way this thing looks. I do have a little bit of a blemish there, I just noticed. Uh, some of the yellow paint from the uh, trim got on the side right there. Not a, not a huge deal, but worth pointing out. Didn't notice that earlier. Uh, but overall, it's a nice looking cabinet, really slick. If you wanna check this out or anything else that Replicate New Wave Toys has available, link will be down below. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys. Really cool little thing, collectible for adults, not really a toy. Give you guys a big ass blurry thumb butt like a Bigfoot. Bye.